everyone, it's Farkad here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can build floating structures and how you can build a base over the sinkhole. Now, this wasn't actually discovered by me. It was discovered by Zoso. He messaged me on Discord. What it actually is, is using the basic walls to make the bridge. He took that idea, though he knew you could actually build on tree bridges. I thought you couldn't. So with this in mind, you can actually make floating structures. I'll put a link in the description to the video on how to build the bridge, though I'm going to show you how to do it here. Now this is an odd design, it actually goes from hard to easy while you're building it. It progressively gets easier. Now building this is completely safe from the new worm mutant. He can't reach it, providing you build it out far enough. But you don't have to build out far. Is it expensive? Well, not really considering how safe it is. Because you don't have to worry about defenses and all that sort of stuff. And is it realistic? God no. It's floating in the air. I suppose you could have zip lines going out all across the sinkhole to make it look like it's been suspended by ropes. <laughs> but apart from that, it's not realistic at all. Though, let's get into it. Now, the hardest part is trying to get the basic walls level with the sinkhole. And the best way I found is with the simple stairs. Though, if you build it too close to the sinkhole, you won't be able to attach the basic wall to it. It just won't want to work. I'm not sure why this happens, but it does. I tried using other structures like the platform and it still won't work. So it's got to do with that edge around the sinkhole. That rock formation that looks different to the normal ground. It's if there's mechanics in the game that is preventing you from doing it. I even used the custom foundation and placed it on top of there, though it still wouldn't work. So the trick is, is that you need to place the simple stairs quite far back. And I recommend you use the simple stairs because it's cheap and it will get the floor level because you want a level base generally. Well, I hope you do. So place it fairly far back, place a basic wall or a wall with door and then get a basic wall out and try and place it underneath. This might take you some time, though eventually you should get it. If it doesn't want to work, try somewhere else. Once that's done, once you've placed the first one, you can cancel the first wall you placed, but don't complete that one. If you complete it, when you place the next one, it will place on an angle and it will look funny and it also won't be flat. So you won't be able to take log cards or anything on it. So you go right up to the edge. I like to go up to the corner, then place the basic wall and then build it. So don't complete it. Always place the second one, then you can build the first one. Now I fell here. Also keep in mind, it is very easy to fall off this thing. It's not so bad that if I fell over the sinkhole, it would be quite bad. So take your time with this. A trick I learned doing the bridge in the other video was to look down at your feet as you're walking towards the edge and go until you can't go any further and you've stopped moving. Because if you're on an edge, you'll actually roll. You'll start to slip and you don't want that because you will eventually fall off if you stand there long enough. So you just keep building it out. Take your time with this, don't rush it. Because if you do fall off, it's not gonna be good. About here is pretty good, I think. I went out this far and the worms couldn't get me, so it's all good. So I've gone out far enough. So what I do is I get the basic wall and attach it to the sides. It seems you can only go three wide on this unless you built another basic wall bridge out here, which I don't recommend because that's going to be expensive. So it's going to be a fairly narrow house, though you can go as long as you want. Now, what I learned from this, placing all these pieces, is that you don't have to complete them all. You can actually save yourself a lot of logs. I don't have any recommendations as to what is the best way to do it. Because if you miss some, you might end up falling through, which I did once. So it might be best to <laughs> just complete them all if you're unsure. Though it will cost you more logs. It's five logs a pop. While it's not that expensive, you have to cart them out here. And that takes time. And here is when I actually fell off because I wasn't looking at my feet. So be careful with this. Save often. And then that way you don't have to worry so much. In this instance, I tested out what it was like to miss some pieces and it actually works out fine. You could actually do it like a checkerboard. That's how I'd recommend, like a chessboard. Though that's the best way to save. You'll have a lot of holes in your, <laughs> in your floor. It's probably not the best. Now I wasn't able to place on the end of this one. I wasn't sure why. So I had to place the middle section and then build off it. The basic structures are really bizarre. They're quite technical, though simple at the same time. It can be quite frustrating to place these things. Keep that in mind. So I just did bits and pieces to show you that you can actually skip parts of it. Though this is entirely up to you. Once you've done it all and you're happy with the length you've got, you want to go pretty long, otherwise you will get a very small house. 
So you attach the tree bridge to one end and go to the other end. Place the blueprint and then build the tree bridge. Then I'm going to do the next one. Same thing again. Place it and connect it all up. And there you go. Once that's done, you can go one of two ways. You can use rock walls or you can use custom walls. Now, this is how you do rock walls, but I decided to go with custom walls because it just looked better. And I had a design in mind and it actually worked out pretty well. So you place on the four corners and complete them all. And then you get out the custom floor and you attach it manually because you can't do it automatic. Go around and piece it all together and it's done. So you can complete that and you're set. Now I'm going to clear this and I'm going to show the idea I had. And it gave me a lot of extra room to build, so it's probably a better idea. So just place a single log from the custom wall on each corner. Custom walls are quite difficult to place a single pillar. They don't often want to actually do what you want them to do. They're rogue buildings. So once they're all built, should only cost you four logs to do this. Keep in mind you can make it as big as you want this thing. The further you go out, obviously it's going to be more expensive that you have a bigger house. But this size is plenty enough. You fit everything in this. So that works out pretty well. So I'm going to complete that. I'm going to get a hole cutter, and this is why I went this method. I'm going to cut a hole in the middle, roughly. And then I'm going to get a basic wall out, place it, and then place another one aiming up. Now I had to place two on the bottom for it to work. And then I'm going to attach a tree bridge here. If I go further, it's going to be too long, and I'll hit my head on the roof. Though this is good enough. So I can cancel those two pieces. I no longer need them. And I can get up there very easy. I have to jump at the end. Also, there's a bit of a gap. I'm a little bit worried about that. <laughs> I start building the house. Just place a custom wall around and throwing in some windows. And then I'm going to complete all that. I'm going to go two stories on this one because I want to add zip lines to it. So second floor, cut a hole, place a custom stairs. This was actually the best placement of a custom stairs I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> It worked out really well. It was very flat and it was perfect. I'm not usually that good. <laughs> I'm going to clear that little bit that popped off there. Now I'm going to start placing the zip line. Unfortunately, it didn't work out as well as I was hoping. Keep in mind that when you're coming in, you've got a lot of momentum. I was hoping to fall down the little hole, though I didn't. But on my way back up, I thought you could attach a custom wall on top of the pillar. Now these cost five logs. They're absolutely ridiculous. Though it doesn't look like it's floating anymore in terms of being on the pillar. So, I don't know. Just a little addition I thought was good. That's expensive. So I decided to do it again. So I thought I would fall over the hole. Though I forgot the momentum was too much and I ended up going over the hole. And <laughs> into the sinkhole again. So I ended up building a little fence. Just to block my way. And what was funny is I actually nearly forgot to finish it off. <laughs> That would have been bad. So I placed another zip line. This one's to get out of the base. So I've got one to get in and one to get out. So with the fence there, this zip line works fine. So I'm gonna place another wall around it. I'm gonna clear the spaces over the zip lines and place some single pillar logs there. So it looks a bit more tidy. I'm gonna cancel the ends and I created a veranda. The reason being is because I wanted to make a zip line coming off the end. Plus you've got a good view here. So why the hell not, you know? Placed a fence around it. I cleared a section so I could jump down into the sinkhole if I want to. Just placing a little bit of extra garnish to it to make it look a bit better. Place the roof. And there's my veranda. Now I should have placed the pillars on the corners first. You don't need to do this. It just makes it more, look more realistic. Though it's more difficult when you've got the stick fence there. I chucked in a few more pillars for extra feature. And I placed a zip line and I ran it across the other side of the sinkhole so I could have a, another way to get out of the base on the other side. Though I'm wishing I had created another way to get in <laughs> and you'll see later on why. <laughs> Though this works fine. It would be pretty expensive to make this. Expensive on rope. Though you can fall down, jump off your base and land straight in the middle of the sinkhole. Nice and safe. Though I placed a little old wall between the two zip lines. Thought it would look more cleaner. Decorated a bit to see what I could fit in here, and you can fit everything. And I fell through the ramp spot. Here's another benefit of building it like this, is that you can actually build other things on the tree bridge. So you have storage underneath your house. So that's pretty cool. Now the reason I didn't clear the bridge is because I was still using it to do things. You'll need it to place zip lines because you won't be able to jump off the house and land outside the sinkhole. 
You can place one end of the zipline, but you can't jump on a zipline to reach the land again, so it's best you leave the bridge until you no longer need it, which is what I did. If they destroy that zipline that goes into the base and you've only got one, you've got no other way of getting in. Nice little cozy home, safe from the bad guys. And I can get out too. I have no recommendation for protecting those ziplines except for turning off building destruction. Now I spawned the mutant, the worm mutant, to see if it was immune. And I spawned one too many and it destroyed the zipline as I was on it. It went flying and it bugged out a little bit. Though I had no way to get back into my freaking base, it was very, very frustrating. So what I tried to do was use a, a tower and a glider. As I was going up, they destroyed it. They're not very strong. I'm an amateur at flying this thing, so I missed my house. It was so frustrating, this whole thing. Uh, the things I do for this game. Though I built another tower and I was able to make my way and actually land on the house. I've really got to learn how to fly these things a bit better. I don't really know how they work. Though I lost my glider, it fell down. So I tried to build another zip line and <laughs> jumped out of my base. <laughs> and I didn't make it. This was so frustrating. So I spawned another worm monster. I was trying to get out of here. And I didn't make it. This was a frustrating endeavor. Though eventually I got there. He was not able to get to the base. There's an invisible floor on the sinkhole that enemies can use. And you can actually build off it. They were able to walk and move on that. When they started flying, they couldn't reach it. They couldn't fly high enough. So this is safe from them. Providing they don't spawn on the base, which I did, which was a bad mistake. It made its form and slammed me straight away and took out a bunch of the base and I fell off. So yeah, though it is 100% safe from these guys, providing they don't spawn on top of it. And unless they add the dynamite cannibal, I think it's going to be safe. The most predictable situation here is that they're going to remove this feature from the game. They'll either make it that you can't build on tree bridges or they'll alter the mechanics so it won't work. They usually like to come after this type of stuff. I've got another way to make floating structures, the FARC method too, which is coming out soon. I've done it in the live stream, but I'm going to do a proper video on it. Like I said, the first part is the hardest and it just progressively gets easier. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this one. Do you think it's a viable build? Is it something that interests you? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.